ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful speech and the best of speech is the book of Allah wa khayrul hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharrul umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things when you be invented to this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything when you be invented to this religion of ours is an innovation Every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, still two weeks out of Ramadan, out of the month of Ramadan, the month that we were blessed to have seen, the month that Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah, he said, if the inhabitants of the grave were given one wish, they would wish just for having one more day in Ramadan. We remind ourselves that we need to have that istiqamah. Yes, we heard a basis of it previously, last week. But we need to continue to focus on that istiqamah so we may be of those who are upon what is correct at all times. Allah said, كُنْتُمْ, كنتم خَيْرُ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ بِالنَّاسِ تَأْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْلُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ Allah said, what means you, the true believers in Tawheed, in the oneness of Allah with respect to worship, and Lordship in His names and His attributes. You believers and followers of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, you are the best people raised up for mankind because you enjoy what is al-ma'roof, what is good and wholesome and correct, from tawheed to all that is good. And you forbid the munkad, you forbid what is evil, what is wrong, from shirk and kufr and bid'ah to everything else which is not liked and which is forbidden, and you believe in Allah. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we must remind ourselves not to take this deen for granted, nor this book, the speech, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He spoke to Angel Jibreel to bring down to Prophet Muhammad over 23 years. In the Quran, Yahdi Lilati Hiya Aqwam, Wa Yubashir al Mu'minin al Ladina Yamanun al Sali Hati and Nalam Ajaran Kabira. Allah says, What well, means verily this Quran, it guides to that which is most right and what is most just. And it gives glad tidings to the believers, the believers in the oneness of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger, and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who work deeds of righteousness, that they will have a great reward, meaning the reward of paradise. So we must remind ourselves, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that Ramadan it came to us to get us, to remind us to be on the clear, upright, right, straight, successful path, a path that will lead us to Jannah. But to, for this to happen, we must has, have istiqama and not revert or return to the evil sin, the carelessness, the abandonment of the Qur'an and the Sunnah that we may have been upon before Ramadan. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah He said, وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّتِي نَقَذَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ, من بعد قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَاثَةً Allah He said, and be not like her who undoes the thread which she has spun after it has become strong. And we reminded ourselves previously last week, who is foolish enough to make something strong and rip it apart, to sew a nice strong blanket that will give you warmth and protect you, only to undo the thread and make it be nothing of protection, or to build a home only to then tear it down or burn it. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, al-istiqamah, 
Firmness is something that was commanded for us to be upon at all times so we may be successful. An Ab An Abi Amru Waqila Abi Amrata Sufyan ibn Abdullah Radiallahu Anu Kal Kultu Ya Rasulullah Kulli fil Islam Kawlan La as Alu La as Alu Anhu Ahadan Gayrat Kala Kul Amen to Billah Kumastakim. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said or a man said to him, O oh Messenger of Allah, tell me a statement about Islam that I will not have to ask anyone after you. So the Prophet ﷺ, he answered him, Say, I believe in Allah, then have istiqamah, have stand, stand upright and firm and steadfast upon that. In another narration, Sufyan then said, Ya Rasulullah, ma akhafa ma taqafu alayya, fa akhada bi lisani nafsihi, thumma qal hadha. Sufyan, he narrated in another narration, Similar to this, he said, O Messenger of Allah, what is it you fear the most for me? So the Prophet ﷺ, he took a hold of his tongue and he said this. Meaning, يعني, he fears for him what his tongue may do to cause him destruction. So we see again a few words from the Prophet ﷺ, a hadith which is brief, but one that encompasses the entirety of Islam. Iman, belief, faith, and istiqama, being firm and steadfast upon that belief. This belief isn't only to say I believe, and it's not only to say it's in my heart, but it must have action with it. And this is the istiqama. This thumma, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ Say I believe in Allah, thumma staqim. Then this thumma here is an indication that steadfastness cannot be achieved without having that tawheed first. You must believe in Allah alone without partners. He must be the only one you worship alone without partners. He must be the one who acknowledges the, hev- the Lord of the heavens and the earth without any partners. And you must fulfill and accept all of His asma' wa sifat, His names and His attributes, without changing any of them, without any proof for that. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he said, Istiqama is following the straight path. It is the straight and proper religion, without turning right or left. And we have become an ummah, unfortunately, who takes who listens, and then we turn right or left till it suits our desires, till it meets our whims, till it meets what we want to do, what we want to live our life as or upon. And this is what we have done. And istiqama is following what is true and correct and not veering. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكَ وَلَا تَتْغَوْ إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Allah says what means, therefore stand firm on the straight path, as you are commanded, and those who turn in repentance with you, and do not transgress from the straight path, for Allah sees all that you do. Do not transgress from this path, this path is the istiqama, that you are upon it at all times. And Allah, He said to His Prophet ﷺ, فَلِذَلِكَ فَدْعُوا وَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Allah says what means, so, what means, so unto this religion, invite the people. Invite them to this deen of Al-Islam, the religion as revealed by Allah to His Messenger Wasallam, The religion that His Prophet Wasallam lived upon and that His companions followed and lived upon and implemented. Invite to this deen, stand steadfast as you are commanded and do not follow their desires. If someone truly seeks to fulfill the requirements of Istiqama, he has to go back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. And this should be our plea every day. Our reminder every day, our focus every day that we go back to the Qur'an, the book of Allah, the speech of Allah, and the sunnah of His Messenger Wasallam, Because it was revealed for this pers- purpose. Allah says, إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمٌ Allah says what means, it is not except, يعني this Qur'an, it's not except a reminder to all the world, to everyone and everything, to all of creation, for whoever wills amongst you to take a right course, يعني أن يستقيم, to be upon what is correct, proper and, and, and right. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, anyone can do what's right for a certain period of time, but we must be firm upon that if we want to be successful with Allah. In, in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He stated that a result of the proper istiqamah, that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to Sufyan in the hadith we mentioned in the beginning, Stating one's belief in Allah and then having istiqama upon it. قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ مستقم, Upon this hadith. What is meant as a, what is a stated result if you do this? If you say I believe 
and you truly believe in your heart, and you have istiqamah, firmness and steadfastness upon this throughout your life, then look at the reward. Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورٍ رَحِيمٍ Allah says in Surah Al-Ahqaq, what means, verily those who say, رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ Those who say, our Lord is Allah, ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا And they stand firm and steadfast upon them, not just in Ramadan, but at all times and in all places on them, the angels will descend at the time of their death. And at the time of your dying, from this dunya, not knowing where you may be going, Allah, Allah's angels, they will say to you, do not fear, do not grieve, but receive glad tidings of the Jannah, the paradise that you were promised. We have been your friends and protectors in this life, and we will be so in the akhirah, in the hereafter. Therein you shall have all that your souls desire, and therein you will have all that you ask for. A hospitable gift from Allah, the oft forgiving, the most merciful. This is the gift for the one who believes, truly in his heart. And he says it, he speaks it. Al-Iman, tasdiq al-qalb, wa qawla ala al-lisan, wa al-abad al-jawarih. Because this is Iman, faith, true faith, is not just you say it with your tongue, but you believe it in your heart. But you also have the actions of the limbs <clears throat> that put that into, into practice. This is the istiqama. For those who say, my Lord is Allah, our Lord is Allah, and they stand firm and steadfast upon this. This is the benefits. You have the support of the malaika, of the angels in this life and the next. Don't think you're left alone to check this life without any support from Allah. Number two, at the time of death, at a difficult time, a time of worry, how will I meet my Lord? With what will I bring to the table? He knows everything I have said and done and thought and planned, even if it didn't come to fruition. Yet, the angels will give you glad tidings to ease your distress of a paradise you were promised that if you lived in this dunya the correct way, it would be given to you for eternity, for all of time. And you'll be led to Jannah, and have what you desire. And you will have that Jannah, that paradise, for eternity, forever and ever. No illness, no sadness, no anxiety, no depression, no old age. Everything perfect, given to you as a gift, and this was promised to you. If you earn it, may Allah make us of the inhabitants of Jannah, and Allah will be pleased with you and bless you. Just for what? Saying, I believe in Allah. Not just saying it, believing it. And then they have istiqamah. They are firm and steadfast upon this. The istiqamah of the heart and the tongue is key. It is key to the istiqamah, being upright and steadfast on the straight path. Because the soundness of the heart must be first and foremost sound upon tawheed. That no matter who comes at you, no matter what harm you may take, no matter everybody, if everyone was to oppose you, that your heart never wavers to worship Allah alone without any partners. According to Ibn al-Qayyim, this needs two conditions to be met. You love Allah more than you love anyone and anything else. If you do not love Allah more than anyone and anything else, you will never taste halawat al-iman. You will never taste the sweetness of faith. Then how can you have istiqamah? What will keep you firm and grounded upon that if you do not have this belief and this love for Allah more than anyone and anything else? And secondarily, Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, you must guard over the tongue and not allow it to go astray. This is why we keep reminding ourselves of this hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudgha. Indeed, in the, bo- in the body is a piece of flesh. If it's sound, if it's pure, if it's wholesome, the rest of your body, the rest of your deeds will be sound and pure and wholesome. But if it is corrupt, the rest of you will be corrupt. And indeed, that piece of flesh it is the heart. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, <coughs> and he made this point clear in a hadith, where he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِنَّ الْعَبْدِ لَيَتَكَلَّمَ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ رِضْوَانِ اللَّهِ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا يَرْفَعُهُ اللَّهُ بِهَا دَرَجَاتِ وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدِ لَيَتَكَلَّمْ بِالْكَلِمَةِ مِنْ صَخَةِ اللَّهِ لَا يُلْقِي لَهَا بَالًا يَهْوِي بِهَا فِي جَهَنَّمْ رواه البخاري The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said, a person makes a statement pleasing to Allah, although he doesn't give it much 
concern. It's become <laughs> habitual that he speaks the truth and he does what is correct and he has good manners and good character and he's kind and the likes. And due to it, Allah will raise him and raise his rank degrees. And, he, and a person makes a statement displeasing to Allah, although he doesn't give it much concern. He doesn't think that it's something that is harmful. He doesn't think it's something that is displeasing to Allah. And due to it, he will be flung and thrown into Jahannam, into the hellfire. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, مَن, مَن يَضْمَن لِي مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهِ أَضْمَن لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ رواه البخاري. And Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he said, whoever guarantees for me what is between his jawbones and what is between his legs, that is, who can ever guarantee their tongue, speaking the truth, speaking what is good, or being silent, not lying, not backbiting, not spreading corruption with their tongue, fearing Allah with respect to their tongue, knowing it could spill him into the hellfire. Whoever protects what's between his jaws, yani the tongue, and what's between his legs, meaning his or her private parts, you don't engage in zina and illegal sexual uh, yani interactions before marriage and the likes of that. This person who does this, then I guarantee for him or her jannah. A guarantee from Allah to protect what's between the jawbones and what is between the legs. And indeed in another hadith in the Musnad Imam Ahmad, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, لا, لا يستقيم إيمان, إيمان عبد حتى يستقيم قلبه ولا يستقيم قلبه حتى يستقيم لسانه. The Prophet وسلم, he said in the authentic hadith that the faith, the iman of a person will not be straight and sound until his heart is made straight and sound. And his heart will not be straight and sound until the tongue is made straight and sound. So never belittle that little piece of flesh that is between the jawbones. Never belittle that tongue that doesn't make up maybe just but 1%, 2% of your body. Because because of it, people will be thrown into the hellfire on their faces or on their noses. This istifama, it is not easy to achieve. This verse, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ This verse, stand firm and steadfast as you have been ordered. It was the hardest and the most difficult ayah, ayah of the ayat of the Qur'an on the Prophet ﷺ. Because this is the true challenge for us. Not to just say we believe, but to be firm upon that belief. أَقُولُ قَالِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِيَ وَلَكُمْ إِذْعُ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذَمِيرٌ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Sufyan ibn Abdullah, he asked the Prophet he said, tell me a statement in, from Islam that if I were to be upon it, it will suffice me, it will be enough for me to be successful. He said, قُلْ آمَنْتُ بِاللَّهِ ثُمَّ السَّقِمْ Say, I believe in Allah and have that istiqama. Have, be firm, be steadfast upon that belief. Put it into practice, put it into action the best you can. This ayah that we just previously mentioned shows that no one will achieve the perfect istiqama, but they'll be deficient in it. The ayah that we're about to mention. That's why after its command, Allah, He mentions making istiqama. Asking Allah for forgiveness. Allah says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشْرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهٌ وَاحِدٌ فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ وَوَيْنٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ Allah, He says in Surah Fussilat, what means? Say, I am but a human being like yourselves. But it has been inspired to me that your God and my God, that your ilah and my ilah is one. And this is the only one worthy of worship. The only one... Do all praise. The only one we should fear and we should rely on and we should turn to and we should trust in. So take the straight path of Him. فَاسْتَقِيمُ لَهُ Take the straight path Allah has called you to and ask for His forgiveness. Why would Allah tell you to ask for that forgiveness? If He knew that at times you would stray or you would sin or you would make errors. So you must turn to Allah. We weren't meant to be perfect. But Allah gave us that path to come back to Him. فَاسْتَقِيمُ لَهُ So take the straight path to Allah and ask for His forgiveness and woe to the polytheists. Woe to them. 
a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ makes this point even clearer. Where he said, nas, innakum lan tatiqu, wa lan tafalu, wa lan, lan tafalu kulla ma umirtum bihi, wa lakin saddidu wa abshiru. The Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, what well, means, O oh people, you are not able to, or you will not do all that you are ordered to do. You will not be capable of doing everything that was commanded. You will not be able to do so, but instead try to be upright. Try to do as much as you can and have glad tidings. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the requirements of istiqamah, what is required for us to have istiqamah? You must perform righteous deeds. How do you have firmness, steadfastness upon the haqq if you're not doing the deeds which are righteous? Single out, uh, exert yourself to perform those deeds. Try hard, remind yourself, text yourself, do whatever it takes for you to exert in doing the good deeds that would please Allah. With those required deeds, make sure they're in the halal. Focus on doing what is halal, what is correct. Stay away from the doubtful matters so that you're upon that istiqama. Alright? Because whoever stays away from the doubtful matters, whoever stays away from the doubtful matters, he has protected his deen and his honor. His dignity have been protected. Act upon knowledge. If you want to have istiqamah, it has to be based on something. You go back to the Qur'an, you go back to the sunnah of the Messenger ﷺ. There's no room in our deen for bid'ah. This is why the Prophet ﷺ always, he reminded us, وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالًا وَكُلَّ ضَلَالٍ فِي النَّارٍ Every, every innovation, even if it's seen as good by every person on earth, if it's an innovation that did not come from Allah or His Messenger ﷺ, then this is something that you should leave off if you truly love Allah and His Messenger ﷺ more than anyone and anything else. Single out Allah alone in your niyyah, in your intention, and perform the deeds in a matter, in the manner in which they were ordered. Allah's Messenger ﷺ, He said, وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْغَلُوَّ فِي الدِّينِ فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ The Prophet ﷺ, He said, beware of exaggeration. Beware of ex- making the deen an extreme hardship. Beware, beware of going to extremes. The mutakasal extreme, the being lazy with your deen, or the mutashaddid, the one who's going above and on, making things too hard on the people. Beware of those extremes, because they destroy the people before you. So the means to the istiqama, first and foremost, go back to the book of Allah. Go back to ta'ahadu hadha al-Qur'an, as the Prophet ﷺ, he said, safeguard this Qur'an. How? By reciting it, by memorizing it, by reciting it, by memorizing it, by learning it, by teaching it, by implementing it. There's no istiqamah without the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger ﷺ. This is why we see the ayah in the Qur'an that we remind ourselves with. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا And we pray to Allah, we are not from this group where Allah says what's mentioned in the Qur'an and it will be said, and the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ will say, Oh my Lord, my people deserted this Qur'an. We cannot be of that group or we will be in utter failure. The hellfire, even if just for a day, an hour, a, a, a minute, would, could be our abode, could be our destination. The Qur'an must be there for us to have istiqamah. Strive to improve yourself. Make dua to Allah, especially in your sujood, in your sajdah. In your sujood, take longer. Make dua to Allah. This is the best area for sajdah. Why? أَقْرَبُ مَا يَقُونُ العبد مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدْ فَأَكْثَرُ الدُّعَاءِ Because the Prophet ﷺ said so. The closest a slave is to his Lord is when he's in sajda. So increase your dua in sajda. And before tasneem, instead of making the salah something so fast, you just want to rush and get it over with because it's a burden in your life. You need that salah more than anything. That salah is the life of our tawheed. And if you take it away from your own self, you have no one to blame but your own self. Acquire the sound, authentic knowledge. Study and follow the examples of the anbiya. Stick to the Islamic community and the righteous people, the good people who would remind you about your deen if you're straying, if you're sinning, if they see you pulling off. Think about the akhirah, the hereafter, its pleasures and its punishments. Remember death often. Remember it often. Because it's the destroyer of all pleasures. أَكْثِرُ ذِكْرَهَا مِنْ لِذَّاتِ الْمَوْتِ Frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures in his death as the Prophet ﷺ said. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we mentioned it last week. And so we don't necessarily want to continue to keep mentioning it, but Ramadan is just two weeks away. 
and we gave advice from the Quran, from the Sunnah, from the scholars, from Sheikh Sabah al Tawzan, Habibullah, his statements for us to safeguard the deen, for us to protect ourselves. That the right of Allah does not die, does not end, except when you die and you end. And until then, Allah has those rights. So worship your Lord and your Creator. Worship Him until the yaqeen comes to you. That yaqeen is death. Worship Allah. Allah is Rabbu Rabb Allah. He is Rabbu Ramadan. Rabbu Shawwal. وهو رب جميع الشهور السنة فاتق الله في كل الشهور حافظوا على دينكم حافظوا على دينكم حافظوا على دينكم في كل حياتكم فإنه رأس مالكم عند الله سبحانه وتعالى وهو نجاتكم من النار فاحفظوا على دينكم وتمسكوا به في كل الشهور وفي كل الأوقات So he went on to say Allah, he is the Lord of Ramadan and the Lord of Shawwal, the month we're in, and the Lord of all the months of the year. So fear Allah and keep your duty to Him. Fear Allah and keep your duty to Him through all of the months of the year. Hafidu ala deenukum. Safeguard and protect your religion. And He said it three times throughout your whole life. Because the situation that is dear to us and important to us, that will give us success, is that we safeguard our deen. And that we're upon our deen. And we hold fast to this at all times and in all situations and through all months. In the Shahru Ramadan, Yutbao bil Shukur, Wa Yutbao bil Istighfar, Wa Yutbao bil Farah, Bi Fadlillah, Al Ladi Makkanana min Siyamihi wa Qiyamih, Fanahnu Nafrah bihada Nirma, La Nafrah bin Tira al Shahr, Wa Innama Nafrah bi Annana Atmanahu. He went on to say, so beware of indulging in a lot of these plays and entertainments and, and level idle talk and the likes, because verily the month of Ramadan is to be followed by giving thanks and asking for forgiveness and being happy with the favors of Allah who has enabled us to fast and pray in it. So we rejoice due to this blessing, not because the month is over, Rather, we rejoice as we have followed through Ramadan with the worship that Allah, that Allah commanded us with. And this is why we rejoice. And Allah says, say in the bounty of Allah and in His mercy, in that let them rejoice, it is better than what they accumulate. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, fear Allah. Our Prophet Wasallam he cried, Baka, Allahumma ummati, ummati. He cried, O oh Allah, my ummah, my ummah. Knowing that women would be a trial for us. Knowing that money would be a trial for us. Knowing that this dunya and our lusts and our desires would be a trial for us. We were reminded of the hadith that coming to the masjid to pray. Because this wasn't just a command for Ramadan. And you saw people coming, not just for Salat al-Isha, but for Salat al-Qiyam or Tarawih in Ramadan. And that's a sunnah of the Prophet and It wasn't compulsory, you come. And yet the minute Ramadan is done, the masajid return to being empty as if they're closed and you cannot enter them. And this is a crime you commit against your own self. You come to the salah here, مَنْ صَلَّ الْعِشَاءَ فِي جَمَاعَةً فَكَأَنَّمَا صَلَّ نِسْحَ اللَّيْنِ If you come and pray in jama'ah, in the masjid, in congregation, it will be as if you pray half of the night in prayer, even though you return home and you sleep. وَمَنْ صَلَّ صَلَاةُ الصُّبْحِ فِي جَمَاعَةً Whoever prays the subh, the fajr prayer, in jama'ah, in the masjid, it will be as if he or she, uh, it will be as if he uh, prayed the whole night in prayer. Because it's not compulsory for the women to come to the masjid for those prayers. This is a commando on the men once they reach that age of puberty that they're establishing their prayers in the masjid. Constantly question yourself, we cannot stop the call. Just because you did it in Ramadan, you prove to Allah you're capable of it. Unless you think Allah is dead. If you think Allah doesn't exist except in Ramadan, or He's not alive except in Ramadan, or He doesn't hear except in Ramadan, or He doesn't see except in Ramadan, then do as you wish. Do as you wish. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, know that the part of the rectification of this ummah, our ummah getting help with the struggles and the trials it's going through, it's in us having taqwa. And how can we have taqwa if we're abandoning the masajid? This is an abandonment of the sunnah. 
And if you abandon the sunnah of the Prophet you have gone astray. كَمَا قَلِبْ مِنْ سَعُودَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ When you see the Muslims coming and praying in the masajid, their five daily prayers like they did in Ramadan, you will see things change in this ummah. You will see the ummah really exemplify كُنْتُمْ خَيْرُ أُمَّةً أُخْرِجَتْنَ النَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ تَنْهَوْنَ عَنَ الْمُنْكَرُ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ you will then at that time see that this is the best nation raised up for mankind because they enjoin what is correct. They don't just say it. They enjoin, they forbid what is evil and sinful and harmful. They don't just say it. And they believe in Allah. May Allah make us of those who do so.